As we gather this morning, we acknowledge that the land upon which we reside is Treaty 6 territory, the traditional territory of the Cree peoples and the homeland of the Métis Nation. May we live with respect upon this land and in friendship and reconciliation with our neighbours. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Glory to God, source of all being, eternal word, and Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia.
Let us pray. God of restless fire and urgent rivers flow, unsettle the false peace which hides our divisions. Unfold our hearts to sense your presence. Unloose your kingdom and make us one in Jesus Christ, the first of many brothers and sisters. Amen. A reading from Jeremiah. Am I God nearby, says the Lord, and not a God far off? Who can hide in secret places so that I cannot see them, says the Lord? Do I not fill heaven and earth, says the Lord? I have heard prophets have said, who prophecy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed, how long? Will the hearts of the prophets ever turn back? Those who prophesy lies and who prophesy the deceit of their own heart? They plan to make my people forget my name by their dreams that they tell one another, just as their ancestors forgot my name from Baal. Let the prophet who has a dream tell a dream, but let the one who has my word speak my word faithfully. What has straw in common with wheat, says the Lord? Is not my word like fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces? Holy word, holy wisdom, thanks be to God. This morning we pray Psalm 82. God stands in the council of heaven and gives judgment in the midst of the gods. How long will you judge unjustly and show favor to the wicked? Save the weak and the orphan, defend the humble and needy. Rescue the weak and the poor, deliver them from the power of the wicked. They do not know, neither do they understand. They go about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. Now I say to you, you are gods, and all of you children of the Most High. Nevertheless, you shall die like mortals, and fall like any prince. Arise, O God, and rule the earth for you shall take all nations for your own. Strength of the weak, defender of the needy, rescuer of the poor, deliver us from the power of wickedness that we may rejoice in your justice now and forever through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading <clears throat> from the letter to the Hebrews. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land. But when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fall, fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab, the prostitute, did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had received the spies in peace. And what more can I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jophus, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouth of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, one strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sawn in two. 
They were killed by a sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, prostituted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all these, though they were condemned for their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin that clings so closely and lets us run with perverse the race that has been set, with perseverance, the race that has been set before us. Looking to Jesus, the pioneer and protector of our faith, who for the sake of joy was set us before him and endured the cross, disregarding its shame, shame and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Holy word, holy wisdom, thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I have come to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided, father against son, and son against father, mother against daughter, and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say, it is going to rain. And so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, there will be scorching heat. And it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky. But why do you not know how to interpret the present time? The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My friends, I speak to you in the name of God, Creator, Redeemer, and Holy Spirit. The other evening, just this past week, my son-in-law, Chris, sat down on his deck to enjoy a cup of coffee. His First swallow served up a surprise, the kind of surprise that led me to say, ouch, when told about it. He inadvertently swallowed a bee, and of course, it stung him. Benadryl soon eased his situation. But when I got digging in today's scriptures, I found myself reacting with the same word, ouch. These readings carry a sting, a harshness that is both unexpected and unsettling. The gospel especially is one of those texts that preachers feel obligated to tackle while wishing they didn't have to. And there we have the nub of today's readings, compelling us to set aside our comfortable warm and fuzzy approach to faith for an honest, unflinching embrace of its demands upon our lives. They might elicit an ouch when we hear them, 
but they call us to take seriously the truth that God's shalom is about more than ease or good feelings, that a vibrant, healthy faith will disturb, surprise, provoke, or challenge us more than it will make us feel good. Now, normally, I just focus on one text in a homily, but today I invite you to come with me on a bit of a circular journey through these readings, which nearly explode off the page with strong, provocative language and images. We'll begin with the jarring question posed in the gospel. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth, Jesus asked? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided, three against two, and two against three. Ouch, we say. That's harsh. Aren't you supposed to be the prince of peace, the one who says, peace be with you? Or go in peace and sin no more? From Jeremiah, we hear God asking, is not my word like fire and like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces? Where's the peace here, we wonder? The psalm elevates the ouch factor with a reminder that you shall die like mortals and fall like any prince in referring to those who would deny justice to the needy. The letter to the, the Hebrews asserts that many great heroes of the faith died horrible deaths and did not receive what was promised. And then in the gospel, Jesus declares, I came to bring fire to the earth and how I wish it were already kindled. Ouch, seems a fair response. These texts are troubling and harsh, challenging us to let the fire of God's word burn through us. So let's seek out some phrases or images to help us make sense of this portrayal, this severe portrayal of a faithful life. Jeremiah asks, what has straw in common with wheat? Here, God's using a metaphor to distinguish between true and false prophets. False prophets speak vague, empty dreams, while true prophets offer life-giving words. If you picture in your mind's eye, straw and wheat, what they look like, they're similar, aren't they? golden and rippling in the wind as they grow. Yet only one can feed us. Only one can sustain life. This image invites us to consider whether our faith is substantial enough to offer nourishment to others. Whether it's more than a momentary sweet taste like dessert or the brief buzz of a cocktail. Is it a faith that feeds the soul or just an empty golden husk with no lasting sustenance? Jeremiah goes on to describe God's word as a hammer that breaks a rock into pieces. We might cringe at this, but maybe it calls us to ask whether our lives contain any rocks that need to be shattered by the hammer of God's word. For example, can we allow the gospel to break down the colonial mentality that has fostered white privilege and supremacy in our country? Are we willing to let God's hammer pound through our heedless consumerism and indifference to creation? Can we hear God's word cut through the apathy that allows drugs and addictions to endanger our streets and schools? Will we allow God's word to break open our heart with compassion toward the immigrant and the refugee? 
Surely some things must shatter and die if God's word is to take root, to grow and thrive in us. We wrestle with our personal sins and the corporate ones are all so evident. Jeremiah's hard images compel us to consider whether we trust God to break what needs breaking. Do we really want God to deal with us at our hard and stubborn core? Or will we settle for some soft substitute to an authentic faith? The letter to the Hebrews is a powerful testament to faith, and today it serves up a reminder of the exploits and accomplishments of those who lived by faith. These biblical heroes impress and inspire us by their ways of justice, their defeat of lions and fire, their capacity to draw strength out of weakness. Yet, it's not all triumph and glory. We hear the harsh underside of their stories too. For many were mocked, tortured, or stoned to death. Hebrews claims that every one of them died without receiving what had been promised to them. If that raises questions for us, it's because God's timing is not always in sync with ours. It reminds us that senseless cruelty and suffering are part of human experience, whether we believe in a loving God or not. It calls us to clarity about the faith we affirm, to a brutal honesty which acknowledges the joy and wonder of a living faith, the hope, the grace, and the healing generated by God's love all held in tension with the risks and demands of a challenging way of life that never promises our safety, our health, or prosperity. Gospel is good news, but good news at a cost. Yet there is good news in this Hebrews Hall of Fame imagery, for it reminds us that we're not alone, that we're encompassed by a great cloud of witnesses who have shaped the way of faith for us to follow, and whose lives of triumph and tragedy, trust and doubt, failure and accomplishment, encourage us and call us to account. You and I live in such an individualized culture, it's easy to overlook this cloud, but they're there around us to comfort and challenge us with their stories, which nuance and enrich our own. This walk of faith is not about your personal savior or mine, doing your own private spiritual thing. Ours is a communal faith, transcending place, culture, tradition, and time. And because of that, we can cope with the reality of division over peace that Jesus describes. It's neither his desire nor intention to set parents against children, or that we should deliberately stir up trouble, or use his words to justify violence. But his words are a critical reminder that the peace Jesus offers is not one of accommodation nor denial. It's a holistic, truth-telling sort of peace that cleanses and makes new. A deep, transforming peace that can break open in order to mend and cut in order to heal. With Jesus come realities we might just as soon avoid. Exposure of lies we'd 
probably prefer to leave alone. He'll disrupt dynamics in our relationships with ourselves and with each other whenever those dynamics keep us from wholeness or holiness. Not because he wants us to suffer, but because he knows that true peace is worth the cost. And here's the thing. While Jesus never forced anyone to accept the choices he gave them, most folks who met him were inspired to change. Individuals made decisions that their families or communities could never understand. Even his own mother and brothers called him crazy. No status quo could stop him. With Jesus, it was God's way of shalom or no way. So surely we can search our lives to see where the ouchworthy moments have been, to see what has brought us to a point of saving crisis or change. When has our faith inspired holy division, holy change in someone else? Has our priority been placed in our own comfort or our salvation? What is it like to have Jesus unmake or divide us, to experience the peace that costs, the peace that shatters, the peace that saves? Jesus will guide our feet into the way of peace but only if we let him do so. Amen. An affirmation of faith. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Amen. Leaning into the deep love of God, who is nearer than we could imagine, let us lift our hearts in prayer. We thank you, Creator God, for the blessings which surround us, for the mystery of moon and stars, for water which cleans and refreshes, for the sun. We give thanks for all who grow our food and care for the land. Grateful for all your gifts to us, we bring you our prayers for the wider human family. God of grace, hear our prayer. Let your compassion enfold our broken world, where many live in suffering and fear. May your peace bring comfort to Ukrainian children traumatized by war, to ref refugees in the Rafa camp in Palestine following recent aggression, to Taiwan under military threat from China, to the millions of displaced and impoverished people in Afghanistan, and to Sri Lanka, where peaceful protest over economic severity resulted in harsh government response. Let all suffering be eased and burdens shared. God of grace, hear our prayer. Look with compassion upon the earth, where wildfires rage in California and France as drought and severe heat encompass much of Europe. We hear of record low sea ice in Antarctica and alarming flash floods in Pakistan, South Korea, Kentucky and South Sudan. 
As these extremes and imbalances condemn our human capacity for greed and destruction, we ask you to turn hearts, minds and wills to new ways of living responsibly. Help us to renew and restore your creation that all might live in safety. God of grace, hear our prayer. Let your compassion rest upon the church, divided and adrift in many ways. Fill her leaders with hope and renewed purpose. Inspire us by that cloud of witnesses whose presence is nearer than we imagine and whose example is stronger than we know. Let those returning from Lambeth bring encouragement and vision to deepen our awareness of belonging and our understanding of communion. For our own Bishop Christopher and for all our Lutheran partners and friends, we pray your wisdom and strength. God of grace, hear our prayer. Let your loving compassion enfold all who grieve, all who feel anxious or alienated. Use us to be bearers of your kindness and love. We ask your healing grace for Eduardo, Eduardo and Saldo, Catherine and Glenn Nash, Chris Atkins, Ed and Joan Beisel, Mark Sharon, Joanne Dwernichuk, Amanda Herman, Aniko and Victor Mateus, Merce Montgomery, John Moore, Linda Popkin, Greg Vibert, and Stephanie and Karen Wright. May they know your deep peace and care for them. And as we remember before you those whom we carry in our hearts, we give thanks for the decline in COVID counts worldwide and for all your healing ways at work in our lives. God of grace, hear our prayer. Let your compassion guide and ground our Emmanuel community in all our ministries of prayer and caring, of hospitality and outreach, of learning and creating. Let your loving acceptance of us inspire our welcome of and concern for others. Make us generous and wise, ever willing to risk new ways. We ask your grace for our priest, Fran, and for staff and volunteers who work closely alongside. Keep safe all who are traveling in this late summer season, as well as children and young people within our parish circle. God of grace, Hear our prayer. With gratitude, we remember all who have died in faith and now rest in your care. We ask for your com comfort for Alina and Pasha Pomerenko as they mourn the passing yesterday of Alina's mother who lives in Russia. As they trusted in your love, may we hold fast to your promises of eternal life. God of grace, hear our prayer. Receive all our prayers, loving God, and keep us ever close to your great heart of love. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our stay. Amen. God of Israel, may this day be one of fulfillment and peace. Holy One, hear and have mercy. <clears throat> Teach us to love others as you have loved us. Holy One, hear and have mercy. Fill the world with your peace and justice. Holy One, hear and have mercy. Strengthen and relieve those who are in need. Holy One, hear and have mercy. Renew the church through the power of your life-giving spirit. Holy One, hear and have mercy. 
source of light, yours is the morning and yours is the evening. May Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine forever in our hearts and draw us to that light where you live in radiant glory. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gathering all our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our God in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And the whole earth to live, and the whole earth live to praise your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. <laughs>